So I'm gonna get into, uh, it's not mold, is it? I don't know what that layer is, but I don't like it. Hey guys, what's up? I hope you are having a fantastic, fantastic day. Today, we are back with some more overly sponsored products. These are products that we've seen in ads, we've seen sponsored by influencers, and I bought them all to see if they're actually, you know, worth the hype. And thank you, by the way, if you responded to my Insta story where I asked you guys what products and brands you had seen kind of floating around that had been overly sponsored. I actually just ordered products to test for Rachel's life and this channel. So very excited. Thank you. If you are new here, welcome. Please subscribe if you haven't already. New videos here every single Thursday and make sure you give this video a thumbs up so I know that you guys want to see more of these types of videos because I like making them. So if you like watching them, that's just a win-win. Oh, and I will also link the playlist at the end of all of the other overly sponsored products that I have tested, both on this channel and my other channel. So you can go and check those out because I saw a lot of people had talked about other brands that I have tested before, like for example, Function of Beauty and Il Maquillage. So I'll link those at the end so you can go and check those out. So let's start with the product that I have been testing for months, months now and that is Dime Beauty. And specifically from Dime Beauty, their Lash Growth Serum. I had it in my hands and then my son kind of like puddled off with it. Where did it go? Hunter, where? Did you put it in a different drawer again? I can't find it, but we're gonna talk about it. It's this and it's a Lash Growth Serum. So it's basically going to help your lashes to grow and just make your lashes really healthy. So let's go back to what I thought would only be three weeks ago, but actually ended up being more like three months. Christopher, I have a weird request. Can you? measure my eyelashes for me. I'm testing a serum for my eyelashes. I can't see them <laughs> like this, so I need you to like, tell me how long they are. Metric or imperial? Christopher, <laughs> just need a measurement. My lashes are nice and straight right now, so it should be able to tell. Eight millimeters? Eight millimeters? All right. Okay guys, it's nighttime. I just <laughs> had a shower. And I'm about to try the Dime Cosmetics Eyelash Boost Serum for the first time, and we're just going to track this. I just took a whole bunch of photos, which is my, my lashes look um, very <laughs> curled right now. But I figured I would document trying this for the first time because I'm rolling over this. All I'm gonna do Going close up to a mirror. You don't want this to get in your eye. And we're just going to paint it along the lashes. So far, so good. Okay, I think it's on. Do I feel anything? No. It's kind of wet on my lashes. Not on my lashes, on my lid. But um, you can't see it. It feels fine. Nothing to report so far. So Chris, can you measure my lashes? I worked very hard on this. Okay, looking down. Anything? Nine millimeters? A whole millimeter, everyone. That's it. That's a lot of work for one millimeter of lash. I don't know how I feel about that. Thank you, Christopher. One millimeter is that much. You can't even, you can't even see it. Okay, but look at it another way. That's over 12% increase in length. It's too much. <laughs> I mean, so I guess they grew. I don't know why I was expecting more of a dramatic one, like three whole millimeters or something, but um, no. Just, you know, I was just expecting more. So let me actually curl my lashes and then we can see before and after. Let me just do that real quick. Okay, so there are my lashes after. I have some before footage as well, so hopefully you can see before and after. I don't know, is it dramatic at all? I have no idea. I think the only other thing to mention is that when applying it sometimes, but not always, I would get this sort of like tingling sensation on the skin right where the lashes are. They said that this might happen, so it's not like out of the blue and like, oh my gosh, my skin's reacting. But it is something just to note in case you are super sensitive or anything like that. So did they grow my lashes? Yes. Let me know if you had more dramatic results from the serum than I did. I mean, I've been again testing this for months now, not every single day, but I was really consistent with it, I feel like. So leave me a comment down below if you have tried this and gotten different results than I have. Will I continue to use it? Yes, because I have it and because it I did see some results and I'll continue to use it. Maybe my lashes are just really slow to grow. I don't know. Will I repurchase it though? I don't think so unless after I finish using it, my lashes go back to the length that they normally are and would grow to and then I'm like, oh, then I like notice a difference, you know? So jury's still out of a bad again. And now let's test out another nail sticker because I can't 
get enough of these. This is the brand Manico, and I was looking through my Insta story and a ton of you guys wanted to see this particular brand. So I bought <laughs> these bright neon orange ones. And so we're gonna test them out and see what's up. So first things first, I made sure that my nails were clean. I applied a base coat. They recommended their base coat, but I just applied my own. And I also washed my hands. So now we're gonna go on to the actual nail application. So you can see it is in like this sealed packet right here. And they do recommend if you have shorter nails to chop them in half and use the other half for the other side of your nail, which I actually saw from the last stickers I used, people were recommending doing that, which I think is super smart. So thank you. And this one comes with a ton more stickers, which I very much appreciate because I make mistakes often. So now let's try and find ones that match my nails. I wish this was clear so I could get a better idea of which ones are gonna fit my nail. I don't know, maybe that one? I guess we'll just try it then. So you can see there, it's like a thick sticker kind of thing. Let's apply. Not a great fit though. Well, too late now. That's gonna bother me. It's gonna bother me a lot. Okay, well let's trim this and then try and apply the other side to the other nail. Got my scissors which have nail polish on them. Don't ask me why, I don't even remember. Okay, let's see, can I make it work on the other side? Oh my gosh, I think it's gonna be the right amount. Ta-da! So I'm gonna trim these and um, keep going, I guess. I don't like when they're that much of a difference in terms of how big it is. I find that super annoying. But um, let's put some more of these on and see what we get. Too. I guess I need to start by like trimming these down though. Sneep, sneep. I guess I should get like, um, you know, nail trimmers, Rachel. <laughs> they do recommend putting on a top coat as well and just making sure that the underside of the nail is sealed really, really well. So I will be doing that as well and we're just gonna see what these end up looking like. Okay, so let's finish up these nails. There we go. What do we think? So I have a couple of thoughts. First of all, the stickers um, do not come off easily. They are pretty stuck on there. So if you're not careful, it's going to start to tear up the paper as well. So what worked best for me was starting from the outside and working my way in. That way I could use this finger to kind of like pick, pick off the stickers. <laughs> and also the thing about applying a base first is that if you <laughs> mess up and you want to like reposition your nail, um, it takes up the base coat and is unstickable. And then I just put a clear coat on top as per their recommendation and made sure to like get the edges as well. My nails aren't the most even, so you can kind of see they look bumpy, but that is <laughs> just my nail. Yeah, they were ruined by shellac. Um, thank you everyone for letting me know that it was the way that they did the shellac and not shellac itself. So um, yeah, they busted up my nails, but they're growing out, so that's good. Like I think this one's like down to the edge, which is exciting. So yeah, we'll just have to see how long they last. I think they look really cute. They weren't like a huge pain to apply and uh, like reposition if I need to. So now it's just up to longevity. All right guys, it's been five days. So I wanted to give you an update on the nails. So this is what they're looking like right now. I'm hoping I can get close up enough so that you guys can see. They're starting to break up right at the edges, which I think is really interesting. And it kind of makes sense because I wash my hands a ton and I'm like with kids all day. And again, I will say it every single time, but I am terrible with my nails. Any nail polish lasts maximum a day on my nails. But what's interesting, I'll show you guys the other hand, is that this side is chipping like nail polish, which I've never seen for like a stick on nail before. And it didn't really start doing this until maybe end of day yesterday. Apparently I'm supposed to remove it like a nail polish, not like peel it off. I find these a lot more appealing than a lot of the other sticker brands that I have tried. So honestly, despite this, I think these are way better. So these right here I actually applied last night. This is the, from the same pack, but I was able to get like two sets out of them, which is really nice. Cause a lot of ones that I've tried and I've tried a lot of stick on nails. I don't know why, but I just really like them. And these I think are the only ones where I've been able to get two full sets out of. Oh, and then removal. So I started by just taking a cotton round and and just trying to remove it as I would normally like remove a nail polish. But what I found to work even better, it's by an, another brand that does stick on nails. They're more of like a UV gel set one though. And it's the brand Ohara. And I've tested this in another video, so I'll link that in there as well. This is the Pro Easy Peel Remover. And I was super nervous to use this at first because they had like a lot of very specific instructions in terms of like just making sure you don't get it on your skin for too long and all these types of things. But I found the scent to be really pleasant, very mild. It wasn't like a chemical scent, which I was really scared of. And I used 
use this on like my cuticles basically and I'll just like put a, a couple of drops around it and then they just like peel off. No damage to your nails, nothing. This is by far the easiest way that I have found to remove any stick on nail without any damage to your nails. Um, so highly recommend this. And I also got, I was like, I was testing, this is why like a couple of them are gone, but these are like a black French tip that you can apply to your nails. I'm just waiting for my nails to grow out like a little bit longer. And then I want to use these because they're so pretty and super easy to use. You just like trim off and like stick on and then they have like a clear one to put on top super easy. So anyway, I really like it. Probably will buy more. Okay, now I wanna talk about a brand where I bought a couple of different products from them to test out. One I've been using for a while, one I haven't used yet, so <laughs> stay tuned. And that is the brand Coco and Eve, and they create a variety of different products primarily centered around self-tanners. And they state that their self-tanners are different than everyone else's because they have all these like nourishing ingredients in them that are going to keep your skin nice and hydrated so it's not gonna peel weird or like flake over time you know it's not gonna have that gross like self tanner smell to it and it's also more of a green based self tanner so it's not going to turn like really orange so back in time we go and I tested it for the first time and the application is super straightforward you just kind of pump some into a mitt then applying it it did have a really nice scent to it it was like kind of coconutty very soft very subtle and it felt Felt really nice on the skin it didn't feel drying it didn't feel oily or greasy either but it had like this nice hydration to it which I really appreciated it applied really evenly I felt like it had a little bit of like a green tinge to it a bit but you'll see later it did kind of even out over time I was a little nervous at first but the one thing if you were gonna take anything from this video let it be this because this has got to be one of my top ever hacks that has worked so ridiculously well. So basically Coco Neve, they sell a brush that you can use to apply self tanner um, in particular to your hands, elbows, anywhere that would tend to get maybe a little bit patchy if you have rougher, drier skin. I certainly deal with that a lot. Like I have to be so careful when applying anything to my elbows, my hands. So I was like, I'm gonna get this brush and I'm gonna try that out. Then I forgot it. Didn't end up buying it. Was I a little mad? Yes, I was. But in looking at the brush, it looked really similar to a lot of the makeup brushes that I own. And I was like, oh, I'll just use like a Kabuki-esque brush and I'll try that. So I grabbed a brush and then I just kind of dotted some on and applied it to my hands elbows, knees, things like that. Oh my gosh. I have never had self tanner look so like smooth and even on my hands before, like ever, ever. There was no weird patchiness. There was no intense saturation on my knuckles. So if you have an old like Kabuki brush or you can get one from e.l.f. or something like that, highly recommend. And then they also have a self tanner that's specifically for the face and it's one that you're supposed to mix in with your moisturizer. And they said about two to three pumps. So I did three pumps in with my moisturizer, applied it to my face. You can also apply to your neck, decolletage, all that kind of stuff. And then on to footage from not the next day, but the day after. I wanted to kind of show you guys before I put on any makeup, what the tanner is looking like. At first I thought it was going to be really yellow or almost like gray toned, but I think it's turned out really nice and it's stayed on really well considering also how much I've been washing my hands in the last day and a half because both of the older two kids are sick and so I'm like constantly washing my hands this has stayed on so well like I'm really impressed with how smooth and beautiful it looked on my hands and like that was like the biggest takeaway for me <laughs> now one time I did apply this and it was uh, I've never seen a reaction like this having a panic because I was like oh my gosh this is awful I I always moisturize my elbows and leave it on for a while. So I did all that and I applied the self tanner and you can see how mottled and spotty and I have no idea. It was the weirdest reaction I've ever seen. So immediately went back in the shower, scrubbed that all off, tried again. And I think what happened is I just didn't let the moisturizer sit on my elbows for as long as I should have. Because with the Loving Tan one, I never have an issue, but this one I have to make sure that I leave a little bit of time if I do moisturize first, so just uh, heads up there. I haven't had any reaction like that since, so I'm thinking that was it. It was really weird though, I was not expecting that. Now I wanna share with you guys a brand that I kind of did like a little sneaky, like two in one product testing thing. I actually tested the product whilst also testing like a little 
stick on light basically type of thing. I'll link the video. And a couple of you guys actually got it right in the comments of that video. Um, it is in fact Subtle Beauty and it is their stack what they are basically known for. And this thing, so expensive. But let's dive into that now. <laughs> and Subtle Beauty basically makes these stacked makeup containers basically where they have all these different types of products that you might need for like touch-ups throughout the day. Apparently each of these little discs lasts for about three months of daily use. They said daily, and they also said three months. So let's open this up, I haven't touched it yet. <laughs> Look how small that is. The side-by-side -side comparison, she's so small. You know how expensive this is? It's like $60, $60 for this. Two things I wanna mention. One was obviously the fact that it's supposed to last three months on this with daily use. And number two, they said in sort of their explanation when I was kind of digging through, they had bronzer, but then they said a cool toned bronzer you use in the hollows of your cheeks for definition. And I'm looking at that and I'm like, well, that's not bronzer then, that's contour. It's a different thing. So I have my stack here, let's just dive in. I've done my brows, I've done a little bit on my eyes and I also have a little bit of like a really light, like a tinted foundation basically. Tinted foundation. I meant, you know, you know what I meant. So let's start with the concealer, shall we? That's a, that's a good place to start. I chose the um, the shade, by the way, for the, the whole kit is um, Char Chartier's. I feel like I'm trying to say Cartier's wrong. I'm gonna say Chartier's. It has a little tiny, tiny makeup. So look how little it is, it's so small. So I'm gonna get into, uh, I'm gonna get into the product, but I guess we should talk about the fact that it has this like, I don't know, spotting on the, on the top? It's not mold, is it? Oh, you can't see, I'm sorry. Can you guys see it now? Like maybe, I hope it's picking up on camera because it's just like, it's got this like dotting on the top. Maybe it's just like, I don't know, condensation. I don't know what that layer is, but I don't like it. I'll just like, take that off. Okay, so we have like a thick, kind of a creamy concealer. How are we applying? So far so good. So that's one side, not the other. Good, like a subtle, nice like brightening effect. I like that. Super easy to apply. It's nice. I'm not like breaking out anywhere right now, but we have like little, um, like veins on the on the cheeks a little. Okay, I'm not I'm not mad at this so far. Now let's go in with a little a little shine control, shall we? This is their universal powder. This universal? That's definitely not universal. If that doesn't like blend out to absolutely nothing, I'm uh, have to call you on that. Also have myself a little um green tea latte. This is from a Rachel Loves Life video. I tested out this product. Oh, not uh, actually another overly sponsored product, but like kitchen edition. And I really like the green tea latte one. Anyway, I'll link it for you if you're interested. I wanna know if this product is gonna be really drying on my skin. I wanna know how um, this is supposed to be universal. It says it is a shine control, like a blotting powder. So my hope is that you should not be able to see it, but I feel like you should be creating a blotting powder with a bit of a hint of tint to it so that you can kind of cover all skin cones because I feel like this would look almost like a, it would cause like a, a bit of like a gray cast even. That isn't cool. Don't like that. That would be something that I would recommend doing immediately. All right, let's see. How does this do for blotting. Well, you can see on there um, that it's taken some of my makeup off of my face and put it into here, so that's good. <sighs> Let me try this more like in a circle swirly thing. This is taking a long time. Now I haven't powdered my skin, so maybe this is just for like touch-ups you know, like throughout the day. But then this isn't like a like a go-to everyday starter kit, like you have everything you need in this little thing, kind of a kit then. Uh, let's go on to, also a we by the way, weird order to these products. Shine control, highlighter, bronzer, lip and cheek, and then concealer on the bottom. That's like a weird order to me. So I'm gonna reorder it. <laughs> I want highlight at the bottom, because that's like the last thing I would do. Why is it in the middle? These are the questions. All right, here is the bronzer shade, which is not, mm, I was gonna say, I wouldn't call that cool tone. It's sort of like a ready cool tone though, I guess. It's not like a warm shade. Okay, well, you know what? Let's pull up a bronzer. So here is my, this is like my physician's formula kit of bronzers. So we have two bronzers there and then we have 
the Subtle Beauty one. It's definitely not as yellow as the Physician's Formula one. It's a little bit more red tone, so it's more like this one. I would say maybe sell like a hair more gray. So I'm going to put some on a brush and apply it to my skin. What am I doing, Rachel? Come on, get it together. Maybe a different brush. Try this one. You know? So I need to warm this up. <laughs> Whoa, that looks aggressive on screen. I am so sorry. Yike, 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 yike. Let's try and fix it with blush. So now we're gonna go on to the lip and cheek. This is a very cool toned blush and it's a cream blush. Cream, of course it is because it's lip and cheek. But I've already powdered. Well, it's too late now. I'm just gonna make it work. I personally prefer more of like a warm tone blush situation versus this kind of color. It's very subtle, it does blend out well. So, so far the concealer and the blush are the only things that I would buy. And even then, I feel like they're very expensive. That's pretty, that's pretty, okay. Okay, and now let's, um, before I fix this up with some bronzer, let's go into the highlight, which is this shade right here. This is champagne, it's very white. Okay, all right. It's got a little bit of like a gold undertone. Okay, it redeemed itself. That's kind of pretty. Kind of like a nice like wet look to the skin. Okay, I like that. Overall though, I feel like <laughs> it's not even at all. I feel like the concealer, the lip and cheek, oh, I guess I should try this on my lips, and the highlighter are nice. However, the price point for these is bonkers. Like I can, I can barely see that on my lips. I cannot imagine with daily use that this would last me more than maybe a month and a half, maybe two months, depending again on how much you're actually using and where you're putting it on your face. But for the price, I think you can just do, you can do better. Okay, moving on to, ooh, Wonder Skin. Okay, this is a very, very weirdly expensive lip tint that I've seen kind of around. A lot of people have been testing it, using it, and it looks really interesting. And so I bought it and we're gonna see. It's that like blue lip tint oil, peel thing, not oil, mask. I think they call it a mask. They do call it a mask. So it's by the brand Wonder Skin and it's basically a lip tint that you apply to your skin. It's supposed to give this like really bright blue look. You leave it on, you use like a little, like a spray thing and then you peel it off and you're gonna get this like beautiful lip stain that is going to stay on your lips all day. So yep, I bought it and we're gonna test it. So the first thing I did was I exfoliated my lips. Done. Now let's apply the lip tint kind of purpley actually kind of like my shirt i don't know why i always do this this is very unintentional all right whoa gosh it's so blue okay i'm gonna do two coats it smells kind of fruity okay and then i'm gonna do a second coat oh my gosh <laughs> I look like Joey from his commercial. Itchy bond. So now I'm supposed to leave this on for like 15 to 45 seconds, depending on how intense you want it. I feel like we should do closer to 45. And then peel. Am I rocking this blue lip? I feel like I'm not, not rocking this blue lip. All right, so it's been about 40, I'm trying to talk. It's been about 45 seconds or so. So let's, uh, oh, I have to do the little spray thing. A few inches away, two sprays. I don't know if that was enough, but hopefully I feel like I didn't get my lip at all. I'm like getting my face. Oh, how do you feel? Dang, this is a lot of work. It's not coming off all in one fell swoop. I'm kind of annoyed. Come off. Getting lip stain like all over my hands. It is literally just like staining my hands. This is a nightmare. Last time. I'm just gonna rub it off. It comes with like a mat. Ah, this is insane. Look at my hands. Look at my face. Is this even like not gonna come off? I have a little piece of paper towel. Let's see. Well, I'm still getting blue. That's fun. It's so patchy too. Do you see this? Oh my gosh. Now my hands are permanently stained. I'm just gonna keep trying to take it off of my hands. Awesome. Awesome. This is great. Yeah. I just like it's like tape, like a taste. No, okay, hold on. So in attempting to kind of pat away some of the excess and make it stop looking so like super saturated just in like a line, I seem to have removed it entirely. So now it's just really patchy. So, great. So um, save your money, don't buy this. Buy a 
cheaper lip stain. There are tons. 1000% not worth it. Now I have to fix this. All right, well, I tried to save it and I couldn't, so. But I mean, this is basically what I wanted to happen and this took me like 10 seconds. And now finally, I wanna talk about a brand that a lot of you guys had mentioned seeing and that is NYX. They're most well known for their period underwear, but they also do like bras, tank tops, that kind of stuff as well. So it's actually funny because I had purchased their period underwear, like completely unrelated to the video because I'm like, I want to try it. And I personally really like it. I wish I had had it in like high school because this would have made such a huge difference for me and I wouldn't have to keep, you know, getting my mom to drop off new pants. The material is really nice. It's super soft. It doesn't feel gross. It's easy to wash, wear, it's comfortable, all that fun stuff. I really like it, but I actually bought to test for a video, their tank tops, which are also really popular. And it says here, this is not your average tank top, not even close. Love the dramatics. This was inspired by Nick's customer, Kathleen in Seattle. Ooh, fun. Who wanted something that she could wear from the office to the gym or under the blankets on the couch. So kind of like an, just an everything tank top. So this tank top has a built-in bra, removable cups. It's also supposed to be seamless. Feels very nice, feels very soft. I don't know how it's gonna be. Hmm. To me, you can really see the line of where that bra is. There's a very, I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera. Hopefully it is, but I'll show you guys up close regardless. Um, there's like a very distinct line, like a bra line. This reminds me of, um, you know those, uh, those, those nursing <laughs> shirts where it's just like, there's like a very clear distinction where the bra is. It also looks like it like flares out a lot, like a dress, but uh, Hang on, I'm gonna go try that on. Oh my gosh, I take it all back. It is so comfortable. <laughs> Hold on, let me zoom out so you can see this better. Can you see it now? I mean, you can't. Hi. <laughs> okay, so what I like, it feels very like snug, like I'm in, but it's not like I can't breathe, you know? The lines are really super flattering. Um, I was worried about the edges feeling like they were like flared out. <laughs> I recognize these pajama bottoms from another video, but it's actually, more structured at the bottom, which is interesting. It has like a seam here that's supposed to, I guess, like kind of keep it more flat. The one thing I will say is don't put on deodorant first and then put this shirt on because you will get it all over the shirt because there's not a ton of stretch when you're putting it on, um, which is important because you don't want to be like all over the place when you're wearing this, you know? If you're gonna wear it to the gym, but also be comfy cozy on the couch, like it needs to hold you in. Mm, I'm trying to decide if I can see like a bra line. I feel like I can. I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera, but it's like right here, there's a line there. Huh, well, that's annoying. Cause I really like this, but like when I'm sitting down, you can see a distinct, <laughs> you can't see that, hold on. When I'm sitting, you can see a distinct line here where it like curves around the fabric that's kind of keeping the bra shape in place. Again, it's a built-in bra. Like I'm not wearing another bra, but like it's the only thing that I don't like because I can see that. Now I can't unsee it, but it is really comfortable. I can see someone wearing it to the gym. Probably not like super intense workout, probably. The cut is really nice for the office as well. Like I can see this with like a really cute, you know, like a blazer, oversized blazer with this would be really cute. And this would absolutely be something that I would wear to like just lounge or take my kids to the park or something. It's like, it's really comfortable. So if you don't mind this like bit of a line here, I, I say go for it, like it is a really comfortable fit. And their period underwear, also great. I also like that. So let me know, have you like tried any of these products before? Any of these brands before? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Leave me a comment down below. I'm very curious what you guys think. And check out the full playlist. If you've missed any of my overly sponsored videos, I will put them here for you guys so you can check all of them out. I've tested a ton of different brands and there are more coming. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up so I know that you are also excited because I'm very excited. Thank you so much for watching, supporting, subscribing and all that fun stuff. I really appreciate it and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you all. Mwah.